guys, it's Jesse from Bear Flower Farm. Today is Friday, so it's two more days until my Sunday market. And this Sunday, I'm going to change things up a little bit. It is going to be 88 degrees, which is a little bit hot, but it is also after Labor Day. And I think that with temperatures falling into the mid 40s yesterday, people are going to try to take advantage of what weather or what good weather is left before the cold sets in. So I'm hoping for a good market turnout. And instead of just making straight up bouquets, I want to do some vase arrangement. So I only have two out here. I actually have a bunch more inside that need to get cleaned up. These were donated from a friend who was moving um, and I just want to see how they do. So a part of it was inspired by um, some vase arrangements that I made for my friend's baby shower tomorrow. So I'll show you what they look like. So they're on the ground right now and I'll be honest when I first got some of these vases like this one I was like good lord um, this is a very I don't know like old traditional type of crystal vase and I didn't know if I can make it work but I think it looks really really nice and same thing with this vase um you know it's not something I would ever really choose for my own house but I think that for a baby shower that's going to be at a tavern I like the mixed like the mix and match of all the different vases over here. So there's three smaller ones. And then here's two of the quote unquote bigger ones. And this one is loaded with dahlias. So this inspired me to try to do something similar for the market. Now, before I start arranging, I do want to show you what flowers I have for this week. So I feel like in some ways we're getting a little bit more summer vibes um and that's because of some of the dahlias that i get to work with that are a little bit more orange sorbet-ish type of colors but i love it and i think even with the sunflowers that i have the bicolor sunflowers that i don't love um but i have a lot more fallish type colors i think it's really gonna pop so this is what i have so here are the sunflowers um Obviously, these are a little bit more blown out than I would have liked, um, but I do have a few that are cracking open. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix and match, um, especially in the vases, and that will help prolong the vase life. This is my very own bucket that I picked today. I actually have a lot more out in the field, um, but this is verbena. I'm actually you know, still trying to figure this one out because it's been shedding a bit. So I picked this about two hours ago, and it just sat um, right over here, actually. I had to move it, but you can already see that it's already shedding petals. So we'll see, you know, how frequently I'm gonna use this one. But if you missed my last video, this is a winner. This is buckwheat. The buckwheat is just coming into its prime. This is a pink buckwheat. Usually buckwheat is white petals, um, but what I love about it is that it has a great vase life. The stem looks to be um thin but it is actually quite sturdy and this is a really really great cover crop so this is the takan takan i think it's uh pronounced a uh, virgin so it's a japanese type of buckwheat um i guess buckwheat is japanese since the, the the seeds if you were to let this grow out to seed and then you take out the the hull or the the, the shell that's the um that's the wheat that they use for soba noodles so got some straw flower here, got some gumfrina, celosia, amaranth, um, status. My status is giving me a good second flush. And then I supplemented with blooms from my local grower. So look at her dahlias. Um, they are just really, really pretty in terms of um, the pastel sorbet type of color. She gave me some zinnias, some sedum, which is really, really coming into its prime with the purple or pink flowering. And last but not least, this bucket. Um, this is the winner, Silver Shield. I love it. Uh, it is just so versatile in arrangements. It holds up really well. It has a great vase life, so I'm really excited to work with this again. Of course, some mahogany hibiscus, which goes really well this time of year some crazy celosia this is actually self-seeded celosia and it's got these giant clusters um to the point where it feels very different than the celosia that i'm growing so this is celosia selway i'm actually not fully sure what this one is it kind of looks like a plume 
Um, but regardless, it's different enough and it's big enough that it's gonna you know, add some dramatic impact. And then some glads. So got a bunch of flowers here to work with and I'll actually be harvesting more probably tomorrow um, to try to maximize the amount of stems I can get. All right, so I started making some bouquets and I felt like that I was missing this pop of color that um you know i got from the zinnias in the bucket but i wanted it's hard to explain but a little bit more just like texture in the flower so i went out and i harvested some more dahlias that i have now these are a combination of like the dark purple is the edison's this i believe is a bacardi by far the Bacardi has actually been the best producing dahlia for me so far. I mean, I'm getting at least like, you know, four or five stems um, every few days at this point. Um, but then I have some dahlias that I grew from seed and I thought I didn't have very good success growing good usable dahlias for cut flowers from seed, but with the weather finally getting a little bit cooler, the nighttime temperatures falling to the 50s, um, they started blooming. So let me show you. This is a dahlia that I grew from seed. Um, I really do love using this one. This one actually has a relatively good vase life. And typically you can tell based off of the layers. So the more layers it has, um, the more likely it is to hold up better vase life. Um, typically a open center is not great for vase life because it means that the pollinator, pollinators can easily get to it. But that being said, you know, this still, you know, when I test it has a four to five day vase life without any flower food. Um, sorry, my dog is just going to town right now. He is chewing his chocolate ball. Chance. Yeah. You like that? So he's chewing his chuck it. Um, so sorry for the background noise. Um, this is another one. Um, where is it? Looks very similar to the last one, but a different plant. This one is a new one. Um, look at that. So I love the coloring on this. I actually love that it's a smaller size because it gives it that little pop. Um, and then there's a couple more in the field too that kind of look like this, um, but they're not producing buds right now, but they have produced buds and I really do like those. So I would say of the probably 20 dahlias that I grew from seed, I'd probably save five of them for tubers, which is, you know, not a bad rate in my view, but my butt was saved really for this time of year for these dahlias because I had a YouTube viewer who wanted to thank me for my content and sent me free tubers. So um, her, like, it's, it's just amazing the stuff that she sent me and she sent me like over 20 tubers. So it was very, very generous. Um, one more that I didn't get a chance to show is this one. This I believe is the terracotta, very quirky, but you know, still very cool. So I think it also gives it that little, you know, pizzazz in a bouquet. So we'll see how these look in a bouquet. I actually started making some of the bouquets as I was saying before. And you know, I just, I, I wanted to maximize the orange right? And I think that these will pair very well with something like this, right? Just that color tone here. So yeah, um, I'm going to get back to some bouquet making, but first I'm actually going to hydrate these in some uh, boiling water and let it come to room temperature. So that is the best way that I found of hydrating dahlias is um, I've tried like searing the ends and you know, it's not like it was bad, but by far the best vase life I've gotten is using very, very hot boiling water in a vase, putting these in and then letting it, that water get to room temperature. So here are my dahlias being hydrated. I mean, it's a pretty magnificent vase in and of itself with just the dahlias. But here are some of the bouquets that I've already made so far. And which one was it? It was this one where, you know, I just wanted that little pop of purple and I put the dahlia in here that I grew from seed. And, you know, I just think it gives it a little bit of pizzazz, right? So, you know, this one, the sedum is actually quite big. It's bulky, um, but this one has three dahlias in here with a glad. So I feel like you're definitely getting their value there. You know, there's a little bit of the lime against the purple contrasting color with a little bit of the orange. So yeah, there's just a mix of colors here and it feels like it's 
borderline fall, but still summer, summer peppy. everyone it's saturday morning now and i wanted to harvest a bit more i realized i forgot to harvest some of my madame butterfly snapdragons and i just needed a few more things like gumfrina um even some of the cosmos um, i'm willing to cut up today to put into vases and there's some more dahlias that bloom so we're gonna get harvesting for another bucket and I figured I would show you some clips of me harvesting and what it looks like right now because I feel like right now the field is finally hitting its stride. So these snapdragons have actually come back. These are the rocket series. They were put in, they were the first to be put in in this field. And you know, some of them are just not usable. Like this one's a bit lanky, but it is nice to see the color come back and the pollinators still love them. And just look at the rest of this. Everything is finally popping. The rain has done so much good. And the dahlias are finally pumping out blooms consistently. flower. So this year, my basil was a bit stunted in terms of length, and I think it was because of the lack of rain. I did not water the basil at all. So, you know, this for me is a good stem length this year for basil. Uh, I would guess that this is about maybe 18 inches. So, you know, good for a vase, um, even good for a bouquet. It's just that, um, you know, the spike or the seed pod length is a lot longer versus in prior years when I've grown basil, you know, I have a lot more, um, I guess like if this is a torso and this was the leg of a human, I would have more leg height, right? So that the stem or the, the spike can show on top more, but it is what it is. Some of the new basil that I have coming in looks a lot better, but I have a lot of very stout basil too. So um, I haven't used it as much as I would have liked to because of that. Here's another Slosia patch. Um, this one's got a little bit more color. We're going to harvest more from here. So I have a story about my dog Chance. Um, as you can tell, he is a pit bull. Um, and because he's a pit bull, I sometimes get worried about what happens when he gets let out. Not because he's aggressive, but because of the stigma towards pit bulls. So he actually has free range to roam around here. He's usually off leash. He knows his boundaries. We have three acres. He loves it. So we usually let him sunbathe outside and he does a pretty good job of just laying there, laying in the sun. Um, so I'm at work on Thursday and my husband is at home and he lets him out sunbathing. I guess about 20 minutes later, he goes outside to check on Chance and Chance is gone. So he calls his name, he goes around looking for him 20 minutes later, still can't find him. My husband actually is smart enough to call animal control. I wouldn't have even thought of this. Calls animal control and is like, did you guys by chance get a call about a brown pit bull? And the animal control lady is like, yeah, as a matter of fact, we just did. He's basically a quarter mile down the street. So my husband gets into the car and goes to pick him up 
And lo and behold, there's a cop there and a family basically petting him. And so he, a part of me is just like, does he think that that is a great experience and it's gonna get re rewarded? So we're gonna put an air tag on him. We actually tried a Phi collar, that's a GPS collar, and it, um, it was very inaccurate. There was one day where it said, chances walked 500 miles into the Atlantic Ocean, and obviously that did not happen. So um, that didn't work out very well for us, but you know, the boy, uh, the boy wants to explore and we want to let him explore, but we're going to try to put some guardrails on him now. So anyway, just a few more of these. I don't need too many, but let's see. Yeah, like this one. Perfect for the, for the vase. Let me show you what he's doing right now. Whoops. You want more fetch, Chance? You want more fetch? We can fetch. All right, I'm gonna go fetch with him and then harvest some more. So I tricked him and he's out looking for the ball right now. More time for me to harvest. So last but not least, we have a little bit of gomfrina that we need to harvest. And I feel like I have a love-hate relationship with gomfrina. It's obviously very prolific. This is uh, about 25 plants and it is gangbusters. And every single time I harvest, it feels like I didn't do anything. So I'm very, very behind. There's some that are just way too far gone for me to harvest um you know they're good for saving seed but i'll get what i can out of here and this is way too many for me so next year i'm probably only gonna grow like five <laughs> so for those of you who haven't harvested gumfrina um it's pretty easy. This is still fine. You can see that the heads are quite round. This is where it's gone too far. And you can tell because the head starts stretching to be a little bit more vertical, looks more like a cylinder. And then it starts drying out over here. And this is the foundations of a seed. So if you were to pick this, it would start shedding. It would basically blow open, but these are the seeds. So this one goes on the ground. I'm probably reseeding right now, but it's okay. Oops. Whoops. All right, it is time to make some more bouquets. I'm gonna put it on a time lapse, and then when I start making the vase arrangements, I will show you what I do. Right, so I want to show you the three bouquets that I just made. This is the one that I just made. This one. This one has two silver shields. It's pretty packed with foliage. And this one. So yeah, I will uh, wrap these up and I think that when you wrap them up, it gives them a more tight, clean look. Just to prove my point, this is what they look like wrapped. Yeah. All right, so I have um, nine made between today and yesterday and I have to actually get going for a baby shower and then I'll come back and I'll finish the bouquets. So we're back from the baby shower and it's time to finish up the flowers. Before I left, I had a chance to try a vase arrangement and this is what I came up with. So this was a donated vase from a friend who was moving and it is 
I would say that the structure of this is flanked by, it's I think three or four silver shields. Um, there's a sedum in here and then it's a bunch of flowers, right? So there's actually one, two, three dahlias in here, um, four dahlias actually, two of them are really, really small. Um, there's a big zinnia, um, some celosia, amaranth, hibiscus, um, gomphrina, status, and this is it. So I will be selling this for $25 and I'm just very curious to see how this goes. So I'm going to try to replicate something similar. I have two more vases over here and we'll see what happens. So I'll take you along as I make these arrangements. So I realized I never hit record when I was making my vase arrangements. And since I can't hit rewind back, I'm just gonna show you what I made. So this was the first floral arrangement. This is the second. And then this one in this crystal picture is the third. So yeah, we'll test out three at $25 each. What I will do is actually, I will bring some paper and a stapler and wrap these up and sell them for 15 or $17, my market bouquet, if these don't sell um, in the vase. So yeah, it's, it's always worth testing to see what can work and what won't work. So I'm gonna make some, um, I'm gonna use up the rest of the flowers to make market bouquets. I only have 10 right now, so I'm hoping to get up to 15-ish if possible. So I finally just finished. I have a total of 14 bouquets. And let me show you what I have. So these are the market bouquets. These will be going for $17 each. So yeah, look at the silver shield against the mahogany splendor. I just love the color contrast. These have a few glads in there. And then here are the vase arrangements. This one got bulked up because this guy was just way too big to put into a bouquet. So, you know, at the end of the day, if this sells for $25, I know this is loaded with dahlias. It's one, two, three, and I think there's a fourth dahlia in here, four dahlias, plus this other stuff. Um, it is still a better margin for me to sell this at $25 than to try to get one and a half bouquets out of this, especially when you know I'm low on some of the other stuffs to make a market bouquet. So yeah, so this is what I'm gonna be bringing to the market tomorrow, pretty excited. And now I get to clean up, but I will say that the good part about making flowers in the garage is that once I you know, get rid of all these buckets, I can literally use a, where is it? One of these. This is a leaf blower, an electric leaf blower to blow everything out and then I'm done. Hey guys, we are just a few minutes away from the market open. So I wanted to show you what the setup looks like. So I did go out this morning and harvest a few Cosmos and I think it gives the vase arrangements a very whimsical look. And here are the market bouquet. We are about an hour in and it's a little concerning because look at the bread line. I mean, there's a line and look at how many bouquets I have. I haven't sold a single bouquet. It's weird. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. All right. So we are two hours in. It's noon. You can see I still have quite a few bouquets left. The vases have been a bit of a bust. So I've actually wrapped them up into bouquets and are selling them for the $17 market bouquets. You can see that the bread line still has quite a few people. Um, this has been my worst market. I haven't even broken $200 yet total, and we've sold a total of five bouquets, so we'll see what happens. All right, we are down to the last hour. I still have some bouquets left. Luckily, I was able to sell a few more, but I think we could officially call this a flop unless if something's gonna change in the next hour. So still holding on for hope and hoping, um, you know, I can at least get rid of a few more perishable bouquets. All right, so we are back from the market. Today was a flop. Um, today was a 
total flop and days like today come with the territory and in some ways like it's so bad that you have to kind of laugh it off right and i think that if you've been doing farmers markets for a while like me a day like today doesn't get you down as much because you recognize that it was completely out of your control in terms of the reason why things happened the way they did now if it's your first market that you know is a little bit different because you don't have the confidence knowing that hey like will your flowers sell but because um you know the last market i had all my flowers sell out um and then in most other markets i have 80 percent of my bouquet sell out i know that this is not me and this was just the way it was today so just to give you guys a little bit of background today today was apple fest um every week or two there's like a new theme that they have so for example there was like a corn fest theme um some of the more popular themes were like the berry fest so the strawberry fest the blueberry fest there was a peach fest um they they do this as a means to try to get people to come to the market if they're interested in a certain type of um you know summer produce but they also do it as a way to allow people to bring products that are more customized to themes now obviously i have nothing related to apples um especially when it comes to flowers nor do i have anything related to apple scents when it comes to soaps or candles so that being said, they actually took out ads for today's market. Um, and I know this because I would get fed sponsored posts on Facebook for this market. And I could just see the amount of activity that was happening because I am tagged in these posts. And I was like, wow, like there's over 200 people who are liking this. Um, in a typical market, you know, it's only like 30, 40 people. So there must be really, really good traffic today. I was not wrong. The traffic was phenomenal i mean the bread guy had a line out the wazoo he did really really well but part of the problem with the traffic was that um because the weather was actually really really nice today i mean the highest it got was 85 but it felt like a brisk 85 there was wind there was a breeze so people were kind of just going out to the market for the sake of being outside they were not necessarily in this mindset to buy I apologize for any background noise. My husband is demoing the the bathroom. So um, there really is no good time to record this. So that's why I'm recording it right now. But um, all this to say, there was all this traffic. They were lining up for bread and then maybe some like apple baked goods. But after that, they were just wandering around. And I know this because I talked to other vendors. Um, you know, the guy next to me likes to call <laughs> these people looky loos um, just because, you know, all they do is like they look, you know, they engage with you, but there's no intent to buy. And I had this happen to me multiple times today where people were coming up, smelling my soap, smelling my candles, totally fine. We had a conversation and it's like, okay, you know, thank you. So, you know, obviously that happens, you know, no one's obligated to buy. Um, there are also a few people who came to my stand and looked at flowers like, oh yeah, like these are really, really pretty flowers and then basically walked away. And I did hear a few people saying, let's get flowers on the way out, meaning they were gonna buy the really, really cheap flowers from the vendor at the very end. And she was selling like $5 bunches of ridiculously sized bouquets that I would have sold for $15, right? Like I'm not gonna compete with her. I mean, it got to the point where normally I lower my prices. Um, if there's like three bouquets down, I'll mark a $17 bouquet down to $10 just to get rid of it. I had seven left. I brought 14 to the market. I had seven left, 14 plus three vases. Um, and, and I was just like, I'm not gonna mark all these down to $10. So I'd rather give them away at this point. But in any case, so let's talk about some of the learnings here. First, the vase arrangements were also a flop. Uh, you could tell at the $25 price point, people were eyeing them, but felt like it was too much. In fact, there was a woman who ended up buying two bouquets from me, even though for one of the bouquets, she's like, oh, this is perfect. It comes in a vase. I don't have to do anything. I was actually gonna give it to someone who was just moving into the house as a housewarming gift. And she eventually gravitated towards a $7 bouquet because she could put it in her own vase. So that tells me that, you know, my vases or my vase arrangements were not enough in terms of perception to overcome a seven dollar premium for just being pre-arranged right so that that's a really good learning for me um the second thing is just 
you know, I don't think there was anything with the flowers today that led to people not buying. I think it was just my regulars, not all of them came. I did have a couple of regulars who came and, you know, some of them bought multiple bouquets, which is how I got to where I got to. I mean, we were like, I didn't sell a single bouquet for the first hour, which was worrying because normally I sell most of my bouquets within the first two hours of the market. So in total, I had 14 transactions today between flowers and soap. That is half the amount that I normally do. And that brings me to total sales. My total, total sales today were a whopping $289. I would say that my worst market day was in the low 400s. I haven't even been in a $300 range. So to be in the high 200 range is almost like an accomplishment, a bad accomplishment. But yes, so $289, 14 transactions. I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? So um, when I factor in all of my costs, I'm just going to put them up here. I'm not going to go through them one by one, except for I'll talk about the cost of flowers. Um, it gets me to negative $30. So that is of course, factoring my time to sell the flowers, to make the bouquets and all that stuff. Um, I, I basically lost money being at the market today. Um, you know, that being said, I will say that you know, there is still benefit to being at a market even on a day like today, right? So for example, you know, my two regular, I have three customers who come regularly um, and they look for me for my flowers, right? So it's good to be able to continue to supply them with flowers. And I also realized today that they live in an area where um, it's desirable for me to deliver. So I did mention that to one of the customers and she was actually really happy to hear about that. So I think those are going to be potential CSA customers in the future, right? They love flowers. They want to have them in the house every um, two weeks because my flowers are lasting every two weeks. Um, and so I think that when I start forcing tulips or even in the early spring, you know, they will be good people to um, ask if they want to sign up for the CSA. So now going back to cost. For the flowers um the cost of flowers this time was a little bit higher and to be honest i was very generous in terms of how much time i i'm factoring into this market because um when i was making those arrangements i was definitely less efficient yesterday and on friday um, a part of it was just i had a really rough week at work the last thing i wanted to do was try to maximize my efficiency i wanted to actually like use the flowers as a means to de-stress as i was making the arrangements so i said i spent a total of three hours making the bouquets harvesting the flowers picking up the supplemental flowers that i bought from my local flower friend um and so you know i think it's, it was more like close to like five hours, right? But we'll say it's three hours. Um, and the way that I normally look at my cost of goods sold per bouquet is I look at if I bought supplemental stems, how much that cost me. So all in, it cost me $95. That's a bucket of filler, a bucket of focals, um, and then the delivery fee. So $95. And I'll, def I'll divide by that $95 by the number of bouquets that I sell. So if I sell 10 bouquets, right, I'm already at 95 divided by 10 is $9 and 50 cents per bouquet if i sold you know 15 bouquets and obviously that cost per goods sold of each bouquet goes down by a little bit so it hurt me today in the sense that i only sold 10 bouquets um and then i said that the vase arrangements didn't do very well so about i would say two hours into the market which is when things start slowing down anyway um i i brought back up i brought some paper i bought a stapler and I basically wrapped up those arrangements and I put them into, um, you know, basically the bucket where the market bouquets were. Now, you know, these definitely had more stems than a normal market bouquet um, and two out of the three sold. So one of them actually sold to someone who um, wasn't going to buy a bouquet, but she overheard my regulars talking about how long they lasted. And then she was like, well, actually, um, the childhood house that I grew up in um, is being sold and they're closing on it tomorrow. And I'd like to leave them a bouquet of flowers on the table for when they arrive. Um, and she started getting a little bit emotional because it was, um, you know, her mom passed away. So she was helping sell the house. 
And I was like, you know, when we moved here, our seller did the same thing and it was a really, really nice gesture and we really appreciated it. So she was like, yeah, you know what? Like, I think I'll buy flowers. By then I had actually taken my $17 bouquets down to $15 a bouquet. Um, and because of just like how emotional she was getting and just, you know, what she wanted to do, I asked her, well, do you want a vase? Because she was picking out an arrangement that was in a vase before it was perfectly cut for the vase. And I basically brought out the vase and I showed her what it would look like in the vase and she was sold. So the irony was that I sold a $25 vase arrangement really for $15 with a free vase, right? And it's totally fine because um, you know, her story really connected with me um, because I know what it's like to be on the receiving end and I definitely wanted to, you know, encourage her to make it happen, right? So I think that things like that are totally worth uh, giving away a vase for. So all this to say, I had 14 market bouquets. I brought three vase arrangements. I turned them into market bouquets. So I had a total of 17 bouquets. I sold 10 bouquets today, which leaves me with seven bouquets. What I did was I put them on Facebook Marketplace. We'll see if people grab them. If they don't grab them by tomorrow, I'm just gonna donate them. Um, there might be someone who's coming later today, but you know, since I factored in all the cost for um, those bouquets into my my market today, um, if I were to do any Facebook Marketplace sales, you know, that would be straight up profit, right? So if I sell a bouquet for $17, then it's $17 a straight profit, which is the nice piece. And if I don't sell anything, then I've already factored those costs into my calculations and I can just donate them in peace. So, you know, at the end of the day, like, am I discouraged? A little bit. Um, but, you know, I had a little bit of ice cream, you know, wallowed a little bit and then it's time to move on, right? I've got to get some seedlings into the ground and it's going to be a new market in two weeks. I actually only have three more markets left in the year. I'm kind of excited because it's, um, I kind of dread these markets. Um, I'm not going to lie. I kind of dread the weekend leading up to a market just because it is a lot of work for me. Um, you know, you're spending your Sunday morning at a market. You're normally tired after market. There's still other stuff to do. So, you know, I'm kind of looking forward for the markets to end. And I, but I think it was a really, really great experience for me. I think it was a good way for me to start building a customer base for my CSA next year. So it's still time well spent. So, you know, for you, if you're watching this and you're doing markets and you don't have a great market, you know, don't, don't let it get you down, right? If you're confident in your product, if you're confident in your flowers, it's probably just a blip. So that's it for now. Um, and hopefully I'll have a better market next time and I'll see you then.